Welcome everyone. So we will, this session is about uh, the secret to better performance that serve businesses. So let's start. And I am myself to collect children. So you can call me Kalai. And I am a staff software engineer at Excellent. I like a lot of Hollywood movies, I watch a lot. And I am also an ambivert and I am spiritual at art. So I have a total of 13 years of experience. I then started with PHP and then I went out to Drupal uh, in 2014 and since then I have been Drupal. I am going to complete 10 years with Drupal next year. So I am also a Drupal certified Drupal expert. I have led teams of large size from uh, a technical friend up to 15 members. I have spoken at Drupal camp actually, mid camp and also at camp last year. So, I work for Accelerate, we are an integrated global delivery partner for agencies and customers that puts care into employee happiness, engineering excellence and customer success. So, in this session, uh, we will look at uh, starting with the deployment strategy, how uh, the deployment strategy is important uh, uh, to propel you to the finish line in any project and uh, we will then go into the inflow of work, uh, how different uh, inflow of work designs what kind of deployment workflows you need for your project. We will then cover branching strategies and environments, what are the different branching strategies that are available and also the different kind of environments that you might need, which is often a overlooked aspect. We will then move on to three different types of uh, work inflow. One being same day deployments for critical security updates, another being business critical features and the planned releases. So finally, we will look at our case study where we deployed all these uh, in an action project and it's still running. So, yeah, having a good deployment strategy is helps you to realize the fruits of all your hard work in than during the development, right? Um, so because you work a lot in, uh, and put all your hard work in developing the right features and right work for a project, but uh, unless it's deployed to your production systems and seen by your end users and used by your end users, it, it it's it's when you realize uh, how effective it has helped the end users, and that's what everyone wants as well. So, and it is all, all, always, not, not in all the projects, but sometimes it's also an overlooked aspect. We focus too much on the development and what we are developing, when we are targeting to finish it and things like that. And we just decide the light date, but we don't go further than deciding the light date. We don't uh, think about how we are going to deploy this into production without uh, uh, affecting anything else and how are we going to manage other releases as well or other parts of your work in your project. So, a smooth deployments, consistent smooth deployments is a clear indication of your team's success. So, it, it also, it has a lot of benefits apart from increasing your team's confidence. It also um, increases the confidence the customer has on you and uh, the team knows that they can handle a lot more challenging stuff when they consistently do good deployments um, and, and it has a lot of good side effects as well, we will look at that. So, in this slide we will look at how, how to handle multiple uh, inflow of work and do deployments. We will first look at what are the different kind of work that you might need to do any Drupal site doesn't stop with security updates, right? So, and if it has, then you need to reevaluate whether we are doing everything that we can for the customer. So, first, the most common thing is unexpected security updates. Security updates do that as a schedule. It can come unexpected um, when you are working on something else. So, how are you going to deploy that to production? And uh, you, you mostly get requests from clients to do minus EMS updates like uh, changing a field from required to non required or updating other fields and adding a new module like recapture or anything like that. 
uh, it might be something that will help your customers, editors, or even the end users. Then the next part is um, also adding business critical enhancements, uh, which needs to go live as soon as possible due to a particular event or the risk. So, for example, we release certain enhancements for Black Friday or Christmas, and uh, based on those events, the customer wants specific features to be available. And finally, hot fix. So you will get anything in production, even something might break, and and you you cannot uh, stop yourself from fixing it. You have to fix it. So you need to have a proper hot fix workflow that you can really use because hot fix is something that you don't do frequently. Um, if you are doing frequently, that's a different aspect that you need to evaluate. But still, uh, um, a good hot fix workflow that is regularly practiced. And when you do dry runs and uh, check if your team is able to actually do an hotfix, is very important. Because uh, at that time when we really need to do an hotfix, uh, you will face a lot of issues. And the team member will not be confident enough to do an hotfix. So, as it's because they are changing something directly in the production. So, you need to do some trial runs and uh, make sure that the team is comfortable with doing an hotfix. So, if you get these kind of records all at the same time or during around the same duration in a week, in a month or something, and are you finding it difficult to deploy all these requests in a timely manner and you delay certain things if possible and uh, you might not be sure which one to deploy when. So, these kind of requests, what kind of request to receive like this, right? And there might be some other scenarios also. I have tried to cover the most common scenarios with Drupal, but there might be other scenarios as well. So these scenarios decide what kind of deployment, workflow or deployment um, you need to do. And that decides your deployment strategies as well. So it's all about balance, finally. That's that's where you can't come to. So it's a balance between business needs versus security. Um, how so? You need to take a balance between deploying good enhancements that satisfies the business needs, not just enhancements that you think are important, that the customer thinks it's important. So you need to validate that with the customer and uh, continuously work towards your product plan so that you deploy things that serves the business in the right way. And that's a whole different conversation that you need to have with your customer and do that. And not all enhancements that you work will also be a priority for your team. Your team might like to do upgrade from Drupal 9 to 10 or Drupal. It might be in a lower version of Drupal like 8 and they to at least go to Drupal 9. So the priorities for your team and your customer or uh, will be different. Yeah. And that's where the second point also comes, which you are managing between your client and your team. So it, you need to make sure that you are doing business critical enhancements in a way that it doesn't push away the security considerations of your team. So you don't deploy good enhancements alone, but you also make sure you upgrade yourself so that it is secure with the latest Drupal version and you are not carrying too much technical debt. So some amount is okay until you can manage it, but some sites really grow old in Drupal 8, even in Drupal 8, and uh, it's really even difficult that you have a lot of modules that are outdated, and uh, you are really afraid to upgrade it. So you know a lot will break that. So you want to do an upgrade before you reach that situation. So and, and that also, um, is something that the team would not like to work. As a developer, when they are working, they would like on a site that was all the latest version of Drupal and they are developing the good business features as well and the enhancements, which technical enhancements which they also like and some enhancements that are also critical for business. So all of this needs to be balanced and finally it's also how do you do balance between planned and unplanned deployments because um, Plan deployments are something that the team would like, they would like to fix a date, they would like to do it on a particular date and uh, see and make sure that uh, they are certain these are the time when I need to be available to do the deployments. Right? However, the customer might want something in a much earlier date. Sometimes things change 
I have no plan to deploy on a particular date and customer says that I want a week earlier. So you need to be flexible with that as well. You cannot to go and say a customer, this is the date that we fix while you are now changing it. Because things change, priorities change. And you might also have decide to deploy something that you are currently working on up next month. And you might want to prioritize something as this month. So you need to be ready for all these changes. So it's ideal to have planned deployments. But you cannot say no to unplanned deployments. You need to be able to, uh, flexible enough to do unplanned deployments in a very seamless way as well. And we will see how we can make that possible. So moving on to branching. Uh, so there are different types of branching strategies. Um, most of you might be aware of it, but still it's important that you consider these. Um, it's a it's it's kind of a conversation that's challenging when you are with your team because if you are already on one of your um, branching strategies here, then uh, it might be difficult to change. But it's much better to change rather than being in a wrong branching strategy because um, it will have a long-lasting effect when you use the right branching strategy. The first branching strategy we will look at is Jitflow. Uh, here we have three different branches, uh, main branch, um, the developer branch and the feature branch. This is good for large projects with long release cycles and particularly when you don't work on releases parallelly. So we are working on one release currently and uh, it, it doesn't work on any other release. So in these cases, this branching strategy is good and you push features to the feature branch and that gets merged into your developer branch and you push all that is merged into the developer branch into the main branch. So you clearly know these are the features that's going to go to production. And these are the features that whatever features you are not working is not going to go to production. So it's either on and off. It's there's no in between here. So in feature branching you have a main and a feature branch. So this is for even smaller projects where you don't need a developer branch and you just work on just features alone, not much of about fixes and you just uh, merge all the features into your main branch which will deploy things to production. Where the assumption is whatever you merge to main branch goes to production. And uh, the third uh, branching strategy is a release branching. Here you have a main branch or a release branch and here you will also have a feature branch though it's not mentioned here. And these feature branches will go into the release branch. This is particularly useful for projects where you have multiple release, working on multiple releases. So one, one, two or three members developers might be working on one release and other two or three developers might be working on another release. So in teams like this, this release branching strategy is the best one because you will have different versions of the application combined, different features combined into releases and those releases will also be tested separately and deployed to production independently. Then you have to integrate it at one branch before you deploy the production. You might want to have a. You, you, in order to integrate, you really don't have to have a branch, but that's where the environments come, you will go there. So, the final branching strategy is something, um, it's an ideal branching strategy for continuous integration kind of work, but it's, it's something that's a little difficult to follow, but it's the best strategy, which is you don't have any other branch, you just have a main branch. And you work on features, but you switch on or switch off your features based on feature flags, which means that whatever piece of code you write, that can that will go to production immediately. But the end users will not see anything unless you switch on that flag. So this this kind of a thing is very powerful in doing continuous integration because you can debate issues much earlier on in the production environment. And uh, it is to be used by a very mature team who, who kind of are used to this feature flags approach and uh, they might require some training as well. So once they get used to it, you can use this, but it's really good for continuous integration. So the next next slide is about the uh, environments where we will what are the environments available and how having a good set of environments will help you to uh, deploy a good deployment or timely deployment. So 
do you have enough environments to support all kind of work? In the, the kind of work that we saw in the previous slide, different kinds of inflow of work. Do you think that the stage is good enough apart from production? Because these are the three, these three environments are the one that is provided by our student provider. So, if your team is your best judge in this, you need to ask your team whether, um, whether adding an additional environment will really help them. And sometimes they might not be in a position to discuss about it, but you, can, you need to ask questions. Um, and uh, what are the challenges they are currently, which is what we will look now. This kind of is a signal that you need an additional environment apart from the stage and production. So let's say that uh, you think that you are, you are not able to actually deploy a particular value feature because X is already in the pipeline and you want to deploy it. So in this case, it means that, uh, for example, X is already on the environment and you need that to be deployed to stage in production or at least to stage and until then you cannot merge Y features into Dev. So this is a very common scenario. I am using the word Dev, but it can be any environment. So if one of the feature kind of blocks your current work from being deployed or being tested, then you might have to reevaluate the number of environments that you have. And uh, also, could you not deploy because um, just one ticket type of five tickets that have been submitted for UAT is pending? So, in this case, uh, it means that your UAT is being done separately, right? So, this one ticket is kind of blocking your other four tickets from being deployed. Uh, because all the code is not merged into stage or whatever, and you cannot, you need to cherry pick and deploy things. That's the only way you are. But uh, you don't like cherry picking. Let's let's be, be, be frank with that. So yeah, I'll do I'll do like cherry picking. So that's 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 how having a good deployment strategy helps you to uh, avoid cherry picking and uh, do things in a much cleaner way. So the first work in field that we saw is same, deploy, uh, same deployments. So is your deployment workflow letting you to connect deployment anytime, not just the same day, even let's say that you want to deploy something in the next two hours or in the next three hours. Uh, are you all your deployment uh, strategy efficient enough to do that? And is it challenging to do a deployment for an highly critical security update for a site? And similar case. So, or do you check the applicability of a security update, whether uh, can I postpone the security update to a later day instead of uh, deploying it now because it's not a use case or I like to think it will not affect my site. So, that's, that's how we think. So, we tend to push that indirectly. Uh, we tend to see that this is a very rare case, where should I wait to apply it uh, now? Let me combine it with an, another release. So the solution to this is always keeping one work, one set of uh, deployment workflow or deployment flow available to you, which can be dev stage production or any other workflow. So we will look at that. So the second most important thing is business critical features. So this can be like a sort of small enhancement to these workflow editors, which can be reports. Uh, generating the words in the cell, content moderation, workflow changes to content, minor changes to node edit or add pages, or even addition of a taxonomy or tax. So it, it might also be coming due to shifting of focus to high impact enhancements. So some enhancements suddenly becomes a high priority because it means it, the customer realizes that it causes a much positive impact on business and suddenly the customer asks you to prioritize this particular uh, enhancement. So, I mean, you might face situations like the certain due to holiday season or anything. Uh, and it is important that you do on-time deployment for these things so that it uh, assist, um, gives client satisfaction, strengthens the test and fosters a positive reputation. So, every time you do an on-time deployment, it increases the trust not just for the client but also for the team because they realize that they can do deployments even if they are unplanned and that's a very important uh, confidence that they need 
because uh, I'm, I, without that, there might always be the deployment day will always be a study day. So we need to know away from that and uh, not think like deployment is a day when you reserve one day for deployment and do it and not think about anything else or about any other project. Because we do multiple production deployments on the same day or in the same day, in the same week at least. So it's important that you have separate feature branches, we will look more into it in the next slides. And it's very important that you have automated sanity, functional and visual regression test. Because it, it is based on your project, what you need, what kind of test you need. But this helps you to test multiple business features in parallel without the QA dependency where they need to be available to test this particular business feature and only then they can check another enhancement. So if you have your automated test, it can run in parallel for all these features. So yeah, but there are multiple benefits of doing proper releases, rounding visibility for the stakeholders and the visibility for the team. Uh, it gives a uh, sense of certainty for the team on um, that this is what they are going to work in the next week or next month. And it gives visibility for the client as well because they know that uh, this is the team, this is what that the team is working. And uh, this plan might change, but at least it's good to have a plan and work towards it. And uh, you know what you are going to work next week or even next month. We plan releases at least uh, one to one, to one and a half month. So, and it's very easy to assess and make changes. Uh, if you want to make any changes, you know that to change and what feature to do more. Uh, and also to map post production issues to tie it up to a particular release, which release caused this particular issue. And it's also easy to rewrite the entire release. Mostly these releases are combined to the planned release when the features are interdependent with each other. So it is also easy to align the releases with business needs and customers. Customer can ask that uh, I want this particular feature to be deployed much earlier, so let's change the release dates so or let's have this particular feature pushed to a earlier release. So this will help. Finally, we will look at a case study. Um, yeah. So for this particular, this is an actual example of one of our projects where we would have just seen like what are the different kind of checklists that we have. Starting with a pre-deployment checklist, it involves creation of a multi-day or a separate environment for testing this particular feature. Then uh, along with syncing your database with your production database. Because it's important that you test with the latest production database, otherwise we know that what happens. Uh, without the latest production database, uh, you, you get surprises. It's as simple as that. And uh, it's also important to update your sanity checklist, um, like uh, because it also gets expired, and you want to make sure that your sanity checklist is also catered to this particular release or this particular feature that you are deploying. And inform the client, of course, this is when you are going to deploy, this is the time, this is the date that I am going to deploy, and the much earlier you inform the client, the much better it is. Because the client knows that you are preparing well in advance service and that increases the trust that the client has already. So also very important to do release tagging in JIT so that you tag your releases against, tag your tender purpose against a particular release. And finally configuration verification between the, the changes that are in production and between what is there in your files. Then we have the deployment checklist where we again do a deep database synchronization against your production because your production is continuously changing. You want to test one last time before you deploy things to production. So if there is a large gap between the time you do these things in pre deployment checklist and deployment checklist, it's better to do a deep sync again. And then visual regression before you do the deployment so that you know what are the changes visually that your site will add even before you push your product to production. And this catches a lot of issues because you cannot go on each and every page, right? So visual regression automation plays a very crucial role here. And 
It is also important to know who your current collection tag, the last previous tag that is in the parent chip, and also to validate the configurations once more before you deploy. And uh, finally, the standard operational tasks like the business item maintenance mode and deploying it. After deployment, when you, you create the caches and then after the arresting driver and put the caches and when you have the additional cache, then Switch on your site from so check the maintenance mode and make sure the site is up. It is important that you switch off the maintenance mode earlier if possible because we tend to take time to check things, sometimes we need testing search and issue regulation. Everything can be run after the maintenance mode is switched off so that the downtime is very minimal for your end users, even if it is a non business hours. So, this is the deployment workflow. That we have for planned announcements. So, in the case of a planned announcement, this is the ideal way of the planned things where we want to merge everything together, like bug fix, feature one, feature two, merge everything into the release branch, and then deploy them to stage, the stage and production. Right? So, it, this is the normal workflow where the stage and production might be in the default environments where the hosting provider. If you think that you need an additional environment for your release branch, you might have to create it. In different hosting providers, it's called in different names. In Pantheon, it's multiple. In Platform Search, it's environments. In Nakia, it's seven environments, but you have to pay more for Nakia. So, in, in everywhere, the, different, the name is different, but it's everywhere it's same. And uh, the payment is also same, but it's, it is worth it. Uh, the amount you pay because uh, you can buy uh, this number of environments and buy like two or three environments and uh, use them for the planet. So, this same day deployments is done by having a clear path from Bill or whatever environment you are using to production. There are two ways to do is one is the optics, like the bird, or where you change things directly in production. Uh, you can also have an additional environment where you apply the fix from your latest production version, do things there, first things there, and then deploy the production. Or the normal workflow of those stage and production. It's important you have clean code which means that your code is an exact replica of your production site. And uh, it also important you have the latest production data that in your staging. Because uh, so that you can test things in the production replica before you deploy it. And in business critical features, it is important that you have separate environments for each feature because each feature must be they will be independent. You can still check with your client if they are independent or dependent on each other. If they are dependent on each other, it is better to combine them into plan release and the product. If they are independent features, then it's always good to have them separately because if a particular feature is ready for production deployment, it should not stop your other features from being deployed to production. Now, or the other way around, if, if any other feature is kind of UAP not done, it should not stop the another business feature from deploying uh, to production. Right? So it's important you test things, do UAP in separate environments uh, here, and then after UAP is done, only then you merge to build stage and production. Because let's say that you merge things to work before UAD is up to, then you might face a challenge when you want to do a same deployment because your business feature is already on there. So you cannot push your then play to stage because uh, it's not that done approved for UAD. So that's why it's important to have an environment prior to the year where you test things with your UAD approval and then merge things. People want to know that it's definitely going to go for production. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Any questions? How is CICD can help in this field? CICD is part of this field, and I'm considering that CICD is done. So, the main advantage of CICD is in these automated tests that you have, you can have them as part of the CICD. And the earlier you include it in your continuous uh, integration, the better it is because it would be best for the developers themselves to run this automated test and check whether they are getting any issues even before they hand it over to the queue. So it is very crucial that you have on this CLCD one automated test where they are hand in hand and when both are used, 
what is the most efficient way of doing it? Can you explain more about uh, trunk based branching? Yeah, sure. So, trunk based branching is the concept of having only one trunk, which means there is only one source of truth, which is the main branch or the master branch. So, you don't have any other version of your system. Whereas, if normally what we have is we have uh, one, uh, like two or three environments or two or three branches, everything with their different release and things like that. Trunk based development enforces on having everything on a collection as soon as possible, which is <laughs> exactly the other way around we think. Because um, the, the concept is very, very might sound fair. And uh, to do that, but the reason of having such a concept is so that you you have to push your tape as soon as possible to the production, and you fail fast and you recover fast. The only reason, only thing is you need to be very conscious that your features are all protected by these feature flags so that the end users do not see your features, but still your tape goes to production, which is very similar to soft launch. It's not a hard launch where you push things to production. But your like, customer doesn't see it, so it's a soft launch, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so let's say that you have a particular page or new page in your site, and uh, what you need to do is uh, everything that is developed will be inside that page, right? So you need to find the first um, input or the first way the customer sees that particular feature. And what you are doing here is you are isolating your features as well, and that is good. Because what you do here is you create a configuration page and uh, add a checkbox or something, and uh, just switch it off, and this page will not even appear. It will show it for not for even if the URL is it. So, that's, that's how it should be. Is it possible to create a normalization <laughs> image for every project? What do you mean, sir? Is it possible to create a docker image for that particular project? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay. So, in that case, how we can manage the different docker images for each release? Different? For different releases. Huh. I don't know if I separate the upper images with that really because the base infrastructure of your code or the upper images that you are running will have the same kind of uh, same kind of uh, softwares that you have. For example, if you have a PHP image of a particular version, unless there will be some differences in cases where you upgrade to PHP 8, for example, and you are on PHP 7, you are, you are working on a release where it's on PHP 8, and you are moving your site completely to PHP 8 and Drupal, right? So in this case, the Docker image will be different. Yeah, also you can consider like uh, Node.js, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, in this case, um, you will have different Docker images. In this case, so there is there is no way to have a certain different Docker image. But uh, the, what we do is we currently do a similar thing where uh, it's a part of the team works on PHP 7.4, which is the live version of the site. Whereas another person is working on PHP 8. What we do is the live image is the source of truth, right? The other person is working on PHP 8. They make sure that they continuously pull the code from the live version, whatever is going on in the other stream software, and they make sure whatever is deployed live works on the next forthcoming Docker image version. In this case, it would be PHP load. So the responsibility here lies on that particular person who is working on an updated Docker image so that they make sure whatever is being deployed currently is also working on the next version that's going to be to push.
You can just do them in Landu. There are also something called the, the containers, which uh, which I uh, had also trying now, and this is the local. Yeah, yes. Um, it's, it depends on the project. Both Dubai and Landu, we both use, I use both Dubai and Landu, but uh, certain things are easier in Dubai. Dubai is good because it's less performant, consuming than Landu. And uh, we don't, uh, sometimes I think Swala search is easier to set up in Landu. So it depends on your project setup. And I would suggest try both. Whatever works, use it because it depends on a lot of things in your project as well. So there's no straight solution to it. So you can even go outside of Google and Landu, there are the containers and uh, even with Beaver and Lando, we face some challenges where we set, uh, doesn't set up the local environment that for another team member, it doesn't work because that system isn't a different. So we are kind of in a controller that still, it really doesn't help us because certain parts of the code are running from your local, like for example, composer commands. You run the composer commands in a local system only. You still don't go into the container and run your composer commands. And similarly, when you use a Dev container, I think you directly run it in the container. So that way it's good. Every person uses and runs things, everything 100% in the container itself, rather than running any commands outside of the container. In a Dev container, you even commit it inside the container and work in that system itself, in the actual system, like we are working in a local system. We are kind of going back to damp lab everywhere we are using it, but Still, the container is, I think it would be much better than using the container than we do a land group, but I'm going to explore it. And again, for Lando and uh, Docker, you need a Docker test for Is it? I don't think it's paid, but okay. Okay. But I think we use the normal version too. Yeah. But it depends on your project again. So if you need an enterprise version, then yeah. So something you would like to discover more about the Yeah, yes, thank you. So, what we do as part of the rollout is we take a complete database backup in any before any production deployment, and the backup depends on your hosting provider as well. Some hosting providers will be a very easy option to take a complete backup. Uh, in Akira, it's also easy, you can take a complete uh, DB backup. In Pantheon, it, it takes a full packet, and in platform data search also, it takes a full snapshot. So, and the challenging part here is the files, how you install the files, how the files are uh, managed. So, yeah. it's important that you consider that as well, and um, uh, you can create that packet, and if you are using S3 for the files, then you can see how you can create backups based on like creating a version of your files or something. But usually the backup plans provided by managed hosting providers will work unless you are on any AWS. Then you need to uh, check each of these aspects, how the code is handled, how the files are handled, and also how the database is handled. And uh, manage each of these separately if you are on any AWS. Or on your separate hosting providers, not on managed hosting providers.